He wanted to impress his new boss for the next year. Greg Moore was on a path to make great career decisions for the rest of his life. And unfortunately, he was allowed to make a decision that killed him. So let's get back to Richie Hearn's crash. Richie Hearn's accident happened at a slower speed. Um, he, he went sideways because, like I said before, he unloaded his uh, car being in the, in the turbulence of a Hanford device car. And he drove right up underneath it. The car just unloads. Goes sideways. He's, he has the, the throttle to the floor. But right before he comes off the track, you can see that he, he, stomps, his, he stomps his brakes. Because you can see that there are, uh, on his front wheels, there are burn marks from where the, uh, the tires were burning across the asphalt. And this kind of makes a huge difference in what happens next when it goes across the grass. Because he's loading up the car with energy that he lets loose as the car gets in the grass. And as the car is going across the grass, this, this saves his life. That, that rear tire digging into the grass with the, uh, with the under tray bouncing like this lets the car rotate. And as it rotates, he lets go. He's, he has full control of the steering wheel. He can feel what's going on. He gets off the brakes. He, he turns the car so he hits the wall flush, bounces off of it, and he's unharmed. All of this is contingent on the fact that he has two working hands and a clear mind. That's why Rick, Richie Hearns walked away. Because he wasn't taking stupid risk and he was able to react to what the car did. He actually helped guide the car to save his life. Greg Moore, on the other hand, never had a chance. Now, when you look at Greg Moore's uh, tire marks, you see Greg Moore tire marks come down here. Then there's a big gap here where there's nothing. And then there's one gouge right here. It, it goes across here, and then there's this spot right here where the car is sideways, and it bounces up. And then the car tips over, it hits the wall, and it kills it. Okay? They said that he did the same thing that Hearns did. He just smoked the tires and he came off the track and blah, 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 it's all over. Well, that's not everything that happened. Not from what I can see. There was a report by a card official that, uh, and there was a picture of uh, uh, Greg Moore fighting with three other racers uh, in turn one. And they said he brushed the wall. That's what the card official said. And that got shut down immediately. The card official said that, and then it was never talked about again. I actually tried to find that online. And only, I only saw it mentioned in comment sites. And every time it was mentioned, somebody viciously uh, denied it happened. But there's a picture of him on the high outside line. And Greg Moore was known for doing high outside lines with loose race cars. They said that he... Tapped the wall, came off of it, and uh, came up with this unfortunate situation here. Well, if you look on that wall, there's only one spot where I saw a tire mark, but that tire mark cannot be where you hit the wall. Because there is a tire line that comes all the way around. If you, if you get to see the slow... Um, they're, they're after the crash, they're going slow around the track. And you see the cars come around towards where, uh, through turn two. And you'll see a, uh, a mark on the wall that looks like a C and a 5 or a T like this. Now, this is, this is the wall up on the top of the corner as it comes around like this. But that can't be where he hit the wall. Because the mark I see on the track is right here. There's a tire line 
a tire mark that comes all the way around and then as the cars come around the track it goes like this it gets it gets squiggly like there's a tire here that's losing air pressure because if you've ever seen a tire that's sliding that loses air pressure it makes a larger footprint and Adrian Fernandez who actually went on to win that race said that he actually saw Greg Moore crash and he said that I don't think did he hit a bump uh, was there a mechanical failure I don't think so. I think it was just real easy to get behind a car and to lose your air and then it was all over with, especially with a low downforce car. Richie Hearn and Greg Moore had low downforce cars. Greg Moore had the highest speed differential of any racer that day. He had a 40 mile per hour speed differential in the corners versus the straightaways, which meant that the car was extremely loose. He had to slow down a lot in the corners, but then when he got on the straightaways, he could make hella, hella time. So that was how Greg Moore was hoping to win the race. He was hoping to make up for the time he lost in the corners by going down the straights as fast as he could go. Well, at this spot in this corner, which is, this is uh, turn one heading into turn two, there's a spot on the wall, the only spot on the wall here. I don't think that's where Greg hit that wall. But it could be, but I don't see how, because there is a tire mark that comes all the way around the corner, which would be the, the left outside tire, back tire. And when it comes around here, you can clearly see that the tire is losing tire pressure. You can clearly see that something's going on with that tire. And then the strange thing is, is that the tire marks, as you come through the corner here, there's a space, and then there's another space. And that's very weird. That's almost like he's slamming on the brakes. He's trying to, he's trying to do some kind of setting the car or something. Or that the car is bouncing like this. Now, the thing that really got me sort of irritated when I saw Greg Moore's crash was, if you look at where the video starts of him crashing, Two things you need to know that you probably, it goes by so fast that you can't see it. But, when you see Greg Moore's car first time, here's this, here's this, here's the car, here's that wheel, here's the car here. And here's where Greg is sitting. The car's moving this way, it's actually, that road is so low that the car is half buried under the hill. But that right rear suspension member is broken. That tire is up in the air. It is not in a square plane with these tires here. Okay? And it is not because of the impact with this grass that was on it right here. That's not what that's from. That rear tire is broken. Not only that, <coughs> but if you look at that rear tire, this is what it looks like. This is what a rear tire looks like that's inflated. That rear tire is like this. It's actually flat on the top. So he's been on the brakes with that tire coming off the track. Now, did he suffer a broken suspension? I mean, I can't answer that. I can clearly show you right here that it may have broke right there. But guess what that does? That sets the car down on its tray right here, right through here. Now, there are no appreciable front tire marks through here. And that's sort of similar to what we got here. But there is also, there is no tray mark across the entirety of this grass. There isn't. And there is a mark across here that I thought was tire marks, but I don't think that's tire marks. I think that's the, the carbon fiber that was underneath the car. I think that wheel was up. Now, there is clearly tire marks down through here. Okay? So if it broke, it most likely broke right here. 
But when it broke, the car sat right down on the grass and just slid across the grass like a freaking, like you take a rock and you flip it across the pond. And that's why the car was going so fast when it hit the access road and it tipped over. And that really pissed me off. That, that flat tire there and the tire being broken sort of showed there was an issue with the car. That it just wasn't Greg overcooking the car. But on top of him having a completely broken ass hand and being hopped up on drugs so he could drive. Now you got this. And you got people say, oh no, 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 no. He just lost it. It was just driver error. And it, it and Adrian Fernandez was the professional driver who saw what happened. And this is consistent with what he said. He said he saw a wiggle. Well, you're going to see a wiggle if a tire is going down. Especially when it gets to the point where uh, the tire drops the bead off the side. And I looked at both tires after the crash because both of the tires on that side of the car were never damaged in the crash. And I'm going to get to that. And they looked actually pretty good. I was very surprised. But there is rub mark. The one I saw that I thought I saw a rub mark on, I thought was the front, uh, was the, yeah, the front tire. But when he, when he gets across here, and that car explodes over the grass, you can clearly see uh, white in here. Now, there would be white coming off of his front tire. Uh, there's no white coming off his back tire, but the white also could be uh, the carbon fiber scratching across the, the road. So we're going to get to the car turning over because there's a lot of crap about that too that I want to clear up. I'm just tired of people not telling us the damn truth. I really am. You know, God darn it, the guy died when he didn't have to die. And that's why it's important today. Because even today there's people who go, oh well, he died while he was, he was doing, you know, blah, blah, blah. No, that's not what we're here for. <coughs> we're not here for that. I don't want to hear about uh, a guy in a car that's got a hand so broken that he's, he's only driving it with two fingers. And there, there's over 100 pounds of force coming through the steering wheel. That's bullshit, okay? Plus, you got people with their little kids out there. Jesus Christ, man. You got people with their families out there. Do you think they want to have a car come through the fence and smash apart fucking 50 people? That's ridiculous. So Greg Moore should have never been in the car. All right. So I already mentioned it. You know, the, the video of him crashing starts real sudden-like. The car explodes up. This wheel is actually like this. It's actually up. As the car breaches this area here, the car turns on its side like this. And you can actually see this wheel go from here like this. And it sort of turns down like this and goes perpendicular with the ground. And that's when it really digs into the ground and it flips Greg over like this. Now, over and over and over, in all of the reports of this accident, it reports that Greg hit the wall upside down on his uh, roll cage, as in like this. Like that's where the car, that's where the roll cage, that's the top. That is not how that car hit. As a matter of fact, this almost became one of the worst uh, driving incidences in American racing history. Because Greg Moore almost cleared that fucking fence. If that fence had not been there, and they had just put that fence there, if that fence had not been there, that car would have flown into the crowd, into a bunch of RVs, and killed a whole bunch of people. But they put that fence there. And I want to commend whoever built that fence because it was a strong SOB. When you look at this uh, 
wall and you look at this fence, okay, now here's the post. You can clearly see where Hearns hits, hits where he hits. This is Hearns. He hits low on the fence. He comes off. It's, it's a perfect survivable impact because he was able to make the reactions he had to make, make the decisions he had to make to slow the car, to guide the car, and to hit the wall properly. Well, of course, Greg was thinking about a million dollars and impressing his boss, and he was high. So why would he, when he hit the wall, he probably kept his foot in it. Because according to what that, uh, that tire mark coming around the corner is like this, it looks like he never slowed down. I mean, it, he comes around here, you can see right here where the tire mark is in the corner. This is where cars are driving at the camera. You can see where the tire mark actually shows that the tire deflated. But you can see where Greg's car hits the fence because it's right here. There's a tire mark here, and there's a tire mark here. Jesus Christ, he hit that fence high. He hit that fence high, and he hit that fence like this. He didn't hit that fence like this. He hit that fence like this, and he hit it on the left side. The entire left side of the car gets exploded. Um, I don't really want to get into the, the details of what happens after that because it's just really grisly. But I will say this. They put um, tethers on the cars because of what happened in Adrian Fernandez's crash. And the tether, tethers worked very well in that crash, but they also worked against uh, Greg Moore. Uh, but it didn't matter. He was dead on impact. Um, it was a 154 great, uh, G impact. There's no... Even today, that's not survivable. It just isn't. I mean... Uh, and it's important to understand it is a 54 G inverted inverted impact so Greg's the inside of Greg's brain was pushed against the top of his skull and God rest his soul but when the car comes off of this wall and starts doing a spinning thing that one of the the uh, left side front um, tether and tire actually makes the accident worse because as the cockpit is spinning that tire slings itself around the cockpit and actually yanks the cockpit around twice and both times Greg's head unfortunately because the entire cockpit is exposed I mean, these cars, unlike today's Indy cars, are not made with soft-sided impact zones. They were made with radiators and made with under trays and stuff like that. They weren't made with impact zones. And as soon as the car hit the, the wall here, everything on the left side of the car is, is destroyed. It's just destroyed. When the car gets out off the wall and starts its spinning thing, you can see the car spin and the left side radiator and under tray go flying off in the, in the sky. Uh, and unfortunately, Greg's head hits the ground twice and his arms are out and it's just, it's just horrific. Um... A lot of things had to happen for this to not kill someone. Now, Richie Hearns, God bless him. He, he got kind of lucky because the rear tires were scratching and scratching and they turned him at the right time. But he also got 
blessed that he already slowed down before he got off the grass. Unfortunately, 